All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Um, those were some pretty sweet uh, tokens that we just got to see. Um, might go pick up some myself. But before that, we're running into our next round. We have Bob Wong playing what seems to be um, Sneak and Show against Caleb Derward. Against I, the only card that I can see right now in his hand is an Urza's Bobble. And I am already just so hyped <laughs> because what? Urz, what? There's, there's a bunch of decks it could be, I think. It could be right. like some sort of weird eggs deck. It could be Mentor. And in fact, it is Mentor Bomberman. All right, all right, all right. Now, this is definitely a spicy one. Not, um, yeah. I mean, not going to lie. Whenever I think of Caleb playing Legacy, I think of things that are off the wall here. Um, yeah. <laughs> getting a look at this deck list. This is this is incredible. We have, actually, I think he may have played this on stream at one point, but... You know, I like this deck. It's it's got what four ballistas. So what what, what is this deck trying to do actually? Because you probably know this better than I do. Um, so this was a Japanese GPT list from one of the GPTs, I think. So I recognize it a fair amount. I'm not sure if it had Chalice or not, but there's a bunch of infinite combos within the deck. Okay. Like if, if you just have Mentor plus Salvagers plus uh, Lion's Eye Diamond, you yeah. just make an infinite number of monks. Okay. So, or uh. Salvagers plus Lion's Eye Diamond plus Walking Bliss, so your opponent takes 40, you know, whatever amount of damage they want to deal. All right. All right. Okay. So this is basically an Oriac Salvagers combo deck, you'd say? Yes. Uh, he has four caverns, which is actually pretty interesting, which means he can force through the Salvagers mm -hmm. on a lot of board states. Okay. This is, this is pretty relevant versus like a Delver deck or whatever, because you want to cavern, name human, play your Salvagers, and. Uh, even if they counter your Lion's Eye Diamond, it doesn't matter because you can just return it. All right. So this, uh, what we've seen in the quarterfinals, we've seen a lot of 3-0 sweeps, yourself included. Do you think this deck can 3-0 sweep Bob Wong? Uh, yes. I think it might be difficult to do that versus Sneak and Show. Okay. However, one amusing thing to note is if Bob just shows in an Emrakul and Kill puts in Salvagers, Bob could just be dead beautiful i love that, that that's that's pretty entertaining isn't it yeah I, I, honestly i would i will never not laugh at bob if that happens <laughs> but let's let, let's uh let's take a look at bob's deck list we've got um a pretty standard no oh my gosh this is a like this is an extremely metagamed list and i'm seeing a number of cards that stand out to me here yeah. um what do you see that's you know bob wong the two flusters, Torm, two spell pierce split is pretty interesting. Okay. That's not, I would say that's not stock, although I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't, JPA's last list actually looked a lot like that, the sideboard, with okay. Magus of the Moon and Grim Lava Mancer. That, but, yeah, Bob was telling me that Grim Lava Mancer seems pretty sweet. We'll also see a couple copies of Buseju in the sideboard, in the side, sorry, one in the main, one in the side. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, just a real quick prediction before we get into this match, Jarvis. Who do you think is going to take this one? I think Bob will take it in three. You think Bob will take it in three? All right. And I like that prediction. It seems like Twitter says that Caleb is favored overall. Um, but in this game, I may have to agree with you, um, with the only interaction being Chalice of the Void. It depends how fast Caleb's deck actually is, but um, we'll, get, we'll get to see now. Don't forget, Caleb also won a Legacy Grand Prix with Vengevine Survival. Oh, wow, really? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he innovated. It was like Madness Survival. It's forever ago. But uh, I'm excited to see what happens in this match. Gotcha. All right. So looks like both players have their seven-card hands. Um, we will find out who's on the play for you. Bob, I think Bob's it might be. Bob's on the play? Okay. It says Gristle Puff. All right. And then um, he's going to keep a seven. It looks like Caleb's going to keep seven as well. Bob leading off with a basic island and two ponder. Yeah. It looks like Bob probably shuffled on ponder if he drew a fluster storm. Because that is not what you want. Correct, yeah. In this, in this, in this, uh, with this given hand, I think Bob is looking for two things. Specifically, he's looking for lands primarily, and he's also going to be looking for, um, you know, like a show and tell or a sneak attack. Yeah, exactly. Amusingly, uh, Caleb has no white mana for any of his spells. Yeah, but I imagine that once he finds it, 
he might be able to go go off. I mean, even like Cavern of Souls in this situation will be a a decent uh, a decent draw, right? Yeah, you if he draws. Well, let's see what the Urza's Bobble draws him. Urza's Bobble is very similar to Mishra's Bobble in that it's a slow trip. Mm-hmm. But you look at a card at random in target player's hand instead of the top card of their deck. Right, which has a little bit of diminishing values here because, you know, we just use the Gataxian probe to see all of Bob's hand. What's yeah. interesting is, though, if we find a white source and a way to put Salvagers into play, Bob's just dead, right? Uh, no, he has no white mana to activate Salvagers. Oh, okay, you're right, you're right. Uh, one sec. Apparently I have the wrong name, Mike. I'm not Bob Pong, but... Bob Pong's like the young me. <laughs> I've made that joke to his face a couple times before, and then he just like looks at me and he says in, in classic Bob Wong fashion, <clears throat> Silence! <laughs> I, just go, I Silence. just go back to my room. All right, so let's see if Caleb can hit a white source in two draws. Mm-hmm. Ursus Bobble, a very interesting card to use. We see Caleb fired off at the end step rather than instantly, mm-hmm. and I like that. Chalice of the Void, I think, is actually a huge pickup. Mm-hmm. We're going to cycle our probe first, and then if we miss, we're going to just play Chalice on one. Right. By the way, I think Bob has probably put the pieces together by this point without even seeing Caleb's hand. Because there's, he probably has, he saw that Japanese list that had Urza's Bobble and Mentors and Ballistas. Oh, he did? I, I would guess so. Okay, I mean, like, Urza's Bobble is the clear throwaway here, like... Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what do you do if you're... Oh! Hold on. Oh, no, we can't cast Halvagers. Never mind. We can cast Chalice with the Void on one, which yep. is going to be pretty good here. It's going to be um, forced pitching Fluster Storm, I think, because mm-hmm. if you don't force this, any cantrip Bob draws is just, whoa, he didn't force. Yeah. Do we see what Bob drew with the Brainstorm? Because if Bob has a show and tell already... No, um, he's shuffling off the brain. Off the oh, list. right, right. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Yep. So this was the problem with not forcing the uh, chalice. Oh my gosh! All right. Oh, oh, Caleb's going for the throat here. This is extremely exciting. So Bob is definitely going to have to yep. consider whether it's worth interacting with the spell or not. Um, and he is going to decidedly force of will the monastery mentor pitching the ponder, and I like. I think that's fine because Ponder is effectively a dud. I think the yeah. Mentor is just such a fast clock if you don't kill it. Oh, mm-hmm. you, you see how potent Mentor is in the decks you play. It's a much better in this one than it is in your deck. <laughs> well. So many free spells between LED, Lotus exactly. Petal, even Chalice on zero. Uh, no, Ballista doesn't do anything, sorry. And also, but, Urza's Bobble also makes a monk. <laughs> uh, in, in the words of um, Cedric, you know what that is? What? That's good deck building. It is good deck building. <laughs> All right, so this second Monastery Mentor is going to resolve, and I, I feel like Bob's time is now limited because... Bob needs I mean, to draw Sneak Attack. If you draw Sneak Attack, uh, Caleb just dies. Mm, this is true. Sneak Attack off the top, one-time dealer. I, okay, I will say this. There, we do have mismatching lines at Diamond Arts, and... Uh, oh, no, never mind. It's, 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 they they it's were the, matching in his hand... Yeah, it's the difference between... It just has a filter that changes it to the original arts once they hit the battlefield. Fair game, fair game. Also, amusingly, you can use Lion's Eye Diamond to pump the Walking Ballista if you want to. Mm-hmm. Not saying that he'll do this. <laughs> well, I mean, next turn, if he's only got one card in his hand and he's just going all in on beating down, that's, what, eight mana in total, so it's an extra two points yeah. of power? Yeah. Uh, it'll be three, four, five, six, seven, eight with no spells cast. Mm-hmm. If he draws a spell, it'll be 12. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, that's lethal. The, the, yeah, this, this is... <laughs> and the crazy thing about prowess is that it doesn't matter if your spells resolve or not, nope. because this is an on-cast trigger. Yep. I mean, yeah, ho- holding the... Tagori's pointed out holding the LED was actually a little bit faster because it was plus one, plus one for the next turn for all of the guys. Okay, yeah, yeah just like I, have the damage this, scale a different way. Yeah, th- this is just lethal by itself, so. So we see uh, Monk Stompy. <laughs> I love it. 
I joke. I joke about. Uh, no, you know, this, it's it's actual monk Stompy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, your deck has terminus and interaction. This deck doesn't care. It just it's just going pedal to the metal. Pedal to the metal, hit you dome dome to the head, boot to the axe to the whatever you get it. I, you know, it's funny. Um, I have a friend. Um, his name is uh, you know you know Lewis Lewis Bouchot, yes. and uh, he had he showed me this list once. It may have been a little bit different, but he had like the same concept ancient tombs and like lotus petals and like i think he had chrome moxes but the point was it was like a turbo mentor deck yeah and i wrote it off the wall but seeing it like perform right now that's actually kind of crazy i actually think this deck is sort of like well what's a good comparison it feels sort of eggs ish in a way which is weird right i mean it doesn't it, it does need its graveyard for the salvagers part but mm-hmm. as you saw that game, Caleb didn't need salvagers. He just needed some good old-fashioned uh, monk beatdown. Ooh, sure. containment priest plus the cavern is going to be extremely powerful. Yeah, this is a non-interactive piece that uh, Caleb has in his deck. Um, cavern of Souls just looks really amazing in this deck. Yeah. And yeah. post board, we see that uh, Caleb is just boarding into so many creatures, so many like hate bears. He definitely came prepared for. Actually, I'm sorry. Oh, he's not going to bring in the other one, Canonist. Okay. Um, Candice is not good in his deck. He has no disruption. True. Well, tra- traditionally, you want Candice for Sneak and Show because mm-hmm. it means you can counterspell their thing. Right, right. Do you think there's any merit to bringing in Ethersworn Candice just to stop Bob from potentially like chaining cantrips? I don't think so. Okay. I think, I mean, like, you can't dilute your deck too much, I think. Mm-hmm. I think what you want to do is either have a priest, a containment priest in your opening hand, or a fast kill. Right. And so here's one thing. So uh, I noticed in Bob's deck list that he had two copies of Omniscience. And, you know, coming out of the board from this sort of white deck, I wonder if, you know, yeah. a card like Containment I, Priest is on Bob's radar. It's not. You it's can not? look at the way you board it. I mean, the Engineered Explosives might do it, but it, it really looks like Bob is going to get caught off guard by uh, mm-hmm. Caleb's sideboard, I think. All right, and we see a last-minute edition of Magus of the Moon from Bob's side. Looks like we are uh, setting up for some dinner at a fancy French restaurant where the the pr- the main meal is uh, an order of cheese. You feel me, Jarvis? Yeah, it definitely is an order of cheese. I'm not sure Magus is actually very good versus the deck that has four Lotus Puddle as well. But and mm. I guess Bob doesn't know this, but Caleb actually has four Mox Opal. It's really good versus uh, Magus of the Moon. I mean, not to mention basic planes. <laughs> yeah, basic planes clearly sitting in the hand. <laughs> this, this is exciting. I I knew Caleb would uh, bring something nice to the table, and he doesn't disappoint. I know this. This is pretty fun. I wonder how much testing he did with this. And uh... all right, so Bob is going to take a mulligan to six here, looking at. Uh... A new hand of four Smagus, two Scalding Tarns, a Preordain, and a Sneak Attack. Ooh. And Ooh, uh, Bob can Bob sneak, sneak out the Magus. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you know, send a message. Instill the fear. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, that being said, Caleb's hand right now, he's banking on this Chalice of the Void as interaction. Oh, yeah, but that's like the turn one, so... Let's see if Bob decides to force of will this this time. Yeah, I think I think he will. It's just so important to have your setup, well, like your set of cantrips. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the mox opal is already metal crafted, so we we can just fire off the chalice. I know that's and that's pretty crazy. Like, not only do these Urza's baubles like give you metal craft, but like if you need to, you can sack them in a pinch to yep. you know mm-hmm. draw cards and what have you. The deck has a fully eight bobbles, right? Mishra's bobble and Urza's bobble? Um, I didn't get a look at the list, but I would imagine that it maximizes on this. Um, the man behind the curtain says yep. yes, it does. Yep. So, um, Mishra's bobble is actually pretty good with fetch lands. That's the Death Shadow lesson. But mm-hmm. Caleb has Trinket Mage in the deck, so you can also use it that way. Nah, you really true. Want to. Yeah, Trinket Mage actually seems phenomenal in this deck. It tutors for oh, yeah, like almost yeah. everything, anything that you would need. Yep. Um, it's, it's, your, it's your kill condition. 
Oh, he's just popping both the bobbles. Yeah, right. but with the City of Traders in your hand, you don't really need the mana from Opal that quickly. Right, you just want action, actually. Ooh, Trinket Mage and another city. The That's... Trinket Mage was a good draw, not so much for the City of Traders. Right. So Bob is going to fetch here. He drew a Ponder for the turn. Um, cast the Ponder. Let's see what he finds off of it. I mean, I guess you're just primarily looking for mana. Um, and he, he does find some of that. Yeah, I think you're supposed to keep... It's okay. not the most exciting, but you can wipe away to buy a turn. Ooh, okay. Container Priest off the top. So Cavern is going to name Human here. Oh, man, That's, I wonder if this if this yeah. gets into play. Is, the, is it lights out for Bob? Bob took out Omniscience, right? And he Bob did. And not Grimovomancer, but there's a wipe away. There's a wipe away, and then there's also a copy of Engineered Explosives, I believe. Yeah, so it's not lights out. It's just really, really, really hard. <laughs> it's going to be not the easiest for Bob to work through, I think. Mm. We might get into a weird stare-off contest. So Caleb needs to respond with the priest here, otherwise the cavern gets shut off. Yeah, and I think um, being able to cavern in the... Uh... The containment priest is like just so much value that you can't you yep. can't step away from that. Yep. So we're gonna probably get into a spot where Bob starts attacking with the Magus. Mm-hmm. Because Caleb will never block. But the turn after, Caleb's just gonna play a two four. Ooh, explosives off the top is a huge draw though. And that is very good for Bob. Um I was personally excited to see some good old awkward uh draft magic. <laughs> two twos running into two fours. What's draft? I've never heard of this. Yeah, it's that thing that you need to do at PTs. Oh, what's a pro tour? Never heard of it. <laughs> but so yeah, Bob is. Yeah, Bob Sorry. is going to take this opportunity to uh, cast a sneak attack, making any live creature that he draws. Yep. So Bob is going to probably play. Uh, explosives for two. Yes. To s get rid of the priest. Correct, because as long as containment priest is in play, um, the sneak attack is not going to be super effective. Correct. In fact, I would imagine that right now Caleb has um, elemental resistances to sneak attack, so... Alright, so we see it here. Um, using the the mountain and the island to cast explosives for two. Um, Actually, kind of scary. Um, Caleb might just recur. Oh, Caleb could Trinket Mage for LED and draw most of his deck, but it, the draws don't happen right now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what's going to happen. He's going to get LED. Kind of awkward that those are slow trips. But, you know, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. I mean, this, so this process seems like it'd be especially gruesome on Magic Online, but can you explain it? Like, now we'll see what Caleb's going to do. How does this combo work? Okay. So, Oriac Salvagers has an ability, one in a white, return target artifact from graveyard to your hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, one or less, rather, because LED costs zero. So every time you just sack the LED to make three white, you gain one mana. Okay. You can actually make an infinite amount of every color if you want. Okay. So what's going to happen here is he's going to do it enough times to cycle his Urza's Bobbles for like however many cards he wants to draw. Okay. So in it's theory, Caleb could draw his entire deck this turn. Well, not this turn, but next turn. Yeah, the problem is if Bob just peels Gristlebrand, yeah. Bob can just sneak in the Gristlebrand, um, draw, you know, seven, hope find Emrakul, and then Caleb still dies. If Caleb has Pithing Needle, oh no, he would have just Trinket Mage for P Pithing Needle instead then. So right, he right. Have Pithing Needle. Yeah, the, the, the problem is it's just, it's, they're slow trips. He can't actually do anything this turn except play like a chalice on whatever. Okay. So, so basically, Bob has one draw step, you're telling me? Oh, no. 
Someone in the chat pointed out he can draw into his containment priest this way. Ah, okay. You're right, you're right. That's actually very smart. Yeah, it turns out when you can draw most of the cards in your deck, you can do something about not dying. Magic is crazy. So we see Caleb. Yeah, so this this process Caleb's is going to take a little crazy. while. Yeah, this is the word. I think Caleb's deck is probably slightly faster than Sneak and Show. And it also has a bunch of hate bears. And it also gets to play Disruption like uh, Chalice of the Void. Ooh, all right. So we're going to get Chalice, and I, yeah, I think we just... Wait, oh my gosh, can he just, like, cast it for some unreasonable amount? That, he never could mind. cast it for, like, three or four if he wanted to, but I yeah. don't have any real plan doing that. Right. So the old old Salvagers decks used to play Pirate Spellbomb to okay. kill it, which is a lot of clicks. Walking Ballista is just a fantastic card because it's also removal for opponent's creatures that scales pretty well. Okay, yeah. Well, so just an impressive card in these formats. Kind of overrated and standard, honestly, but... You know, Chad, Chad is mentioning some pretty good points here. Uh, fluctuating the uh, amount that you um, cast the Chalice for will turn off things like uh, Wipe Away or Echoing Truth yep. or what have you. So yep. something to keep in consideration, but largely I bet Chalice of the Void is more relevant. Yep. So, frankly... Uh, Caleb also doesn't know Bob's exact list, so he doesn't really know what to put Chalice on. Putting right. Chalice on one is the safest, I think, because it shuts off all of the sub setup cards. All right, so I'm going to ask you a um, are you paying attention question, Jarvis. How many draws does Caleb have so far? Oh, I didn't pay attention to that. <laughs> me neither, so honestly. I was hoping you'd be able to tell two. me. Ooh, four, apparently, is the answer. Okay. Wow, so it's been this long for... Uh, Four draws, okay. This is not a fast process, because it requires two mana per draw. And okay. the duration you do this only produces one mana. Well, I guess Bob does have a new win condition. Tick-tock, you hear me? Oh, uh, they have 60-minute clocks. <laughs> Bob's win condition, this new plan, I did never said it was really going to be that good. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, this is, this is just great. <laughs> Jeez. Caleb is right. explaining what he's doing in the chat just to uh, tell Bob just that he's mostly dead. Facilitate, yeah. Spencer and Containment Priest. And um, I imagine... Okay, so... All right, so we're, we're going to see if um, Bob... Uh, all right, so Bob is going to give Caleb the uh, the gracious concession... Um, the only thing you'd ever expect from uh, a Legacy 2015 Eternal Weekend uh, champion. <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to move into the next match. So what... Okay, so it looks like um, Bob has his second deck loaded. And if, if correct me if I'm wrong, but did I, did I see Food Chains? Yeah, you saw Food Chains from someone. I'm not sure who. Okay, all right. Okay, and there we go. Bob is loading up Food Chain. And um, interesting, interesting, interesting. So Jarvis, tell me a little bit about this Food Chain deck. What What is it? What does it do? All right, Food Chain, also a Walking Ballista combo deck, although it's just a more grindy... It's like a Shardless deck, but imagine if you cut Shardless Agent for Miss Hollow Griffins, Food Chains, and Walking Ballistas, and that's exactly where you uh, ended up. Okay. All right. So, so the co so the combo is you just put exile Miss Hologriffin. So you you use food chain exile Miss Hologriffin, buy it back like a billion times. You have infinite mana in the same fashion, and then you just walk in ballista for forty or however whatever number and uh, game them. Okay. So yep. I think for this match we're gonna we're gonna trade off here. Jarvis, we'll see you um, later maybe, and uh, we've got Good. we've got. Um, what was it? SCG Somerset, Agro Loam, Master Warrior, uh, Tom Keating joining us. So, hey everybody, that's me. Hey but Tom, so we, have you been? Uh, I'm assuming you were watching. How how do you feel about this uh, Oriox Oriox Salvagers combo deck? I think it's sweet. Um, I think it's amazing that you can play Monster Mentor and you can play Walking Ballista and you can play Oriox Salvagers. 
in a legacy combo deck that's just not a particularly well-known one. All and right, it's great right. that legacy is just so wide open, you can do that. Okay, so let's take a look at the food chain deck. How do you feel like the matchup is going to be against, uh, against Oriac Salvages? What what tools does Bob have with this list to uh, in the main deck and the sideboard to maybe win the maybe win the match? So um, they're both combo decks, as you pointed out. Mm-hmm. Um, I say that the uh, food chain combo deck is probably a little bit slower from what I've seen. Okay. And one of the ways that the food chain deck relies on getting time to pull off its combo is by having four baleful strikes, as you see in the list there. And okay. that does a great job along with the other things that you just throw on the battlefield, like infinitely casting missile or griffins and trinket mages and stuff to just kind of really just like block any attacks from other creatures and buy yourself time to find the food chain um, and get your grind engine going. And um, if you have a monastery mentor going going bananas with uh, Cantrip and Oriac Salvager, I don't think that that that, uh, that plan will really be able to stop those kind of attacks. So that could be a little bit of a problem. Okay. All right, so it looks like both players have already started off. Um, I believe Caleb's going to be on the play this game, leading with an Ancient Tomb and a Chalice of Void, and Bob is going to keep a seven-card hand featuring um, an Abrupt Decay, an Active Force of Will, um, you know, being able to pitch uh, Baleful Strikes. And then he's also got Food Chain and Eternal Scourge in his in his hand. So honestly, I think if he draws uh, the Walking Ballista slash Trinket Mage and obviously the necessary lands, he could just win the game here. Yeah, I agree. And also, um, obviously, Caleb doesn't know what... Uh, I guess he does, because he, he probed. Caleb did probe. But mm-hmm. um, I, I think the Chalice of the Void on one is not particularly amazing against Food Chain, so we don't have the list in front of us anymore, but um, Deathrite Shaman is a one-mana spell, as is Brainstorm. But other than that, I think this deck is mostly... Uh, the Food Chain deck is mostly on the twos and threes. Okay. And not only that, we see, like, in, in Bob's hand, he's got the copy of uh, Abrupt Decay, so he can just... Uh, he sure. can just... Um... You know, I destroy do have a the chalice. that he'll hold that for something a little bit more relevant. So unfortunately, uh, I think Oriac Salvager costs four, so he won't be able to tag that. But he could tag um, something else, like a, a mentor potentially, mm-hmm. um, or I guess a walking ballista in response to a salvager activation would also do the trick. Okay. So Mishra's bobble um, is going to reveal an Oriac Salvagers on the top of Caleb's deck. Um, okay. Or did he get his draw? Uh, I. I I guess not if he drew a City of Traders. True, yeah, I'm sorry. It was a City of Traders. Um, and Bob is just going to play a Tropical Island and pass, followed by a draw step Mishra's Bobble for, from Caleb's side. Okay. So we have Caleb's uh, uh, Slow Trips, as Jarvis is calling them, and I like that name. So he's doing his thing, trying to find his pieces, and it looks like he's going to draw for... Um, I guess like he can't really play anything here, right? So he just has to pass. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and we see Bob has drawn a copy of Brainstorm, which he can't cast because of the Chalice of the Void. True, but, true. But he can pitch it to Force in the worst-case scenario, and if he wants to ever cast the Brainstorm, he can always decay the Chalice. True. Um, I, I do think he's more likely to save the Baleful Strix to, to uh, pitch to the Force of Will, unless he's just going to cast it right now. He <laughs> draw. Okay. All right. And so this Fair is enough. one really cool thing about the Food Chain deck, is that even though you may not necessarily combo off all the time, the interaction between Food Chain, Mist Hollow Griffin, and a card like Manipulate Fate is just phenomenal because you have recurring creatures that, you know, Food Chain gives your creatures vigilance, it buys them back whenever you need them, um, and we could actually just see next turn, um, or maybe like the turn in a couple turns, Bob just have a swath of, um, what is, is, is Mist Hollow Griffin a bird or is it a harpy? One of, one, of, one, of, one of the creature types, and just, you know, threatening, you know, Caleb's life total extremely, extremely quickly. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And so Manipulate Fate in this kind of deck, as you said, is basically draw four. Because mm-hmm. when you search your library for three cards and exile them, you search your library for three Mistfall Griffins or two Mistfall Griffins and an Eternal Scourge. They yep. go to the exile zone, which means that you can cast them from the exile zone when you have Food Chain on the battlefield. And then you also do draw a card to replace the Manipulate Fate, it's fate itself. So that's a really good card advantage engine in the deck, while also being a, a, a combo tutor enabler. So yeah. that's a really strong interaction. Um, one thing, though, that Bob is missing here is he is missing a third land. And so I was expecting him to actually decay the chalice and then unlock the brainstorm to find a third land. But he went for the Strix, trying to dig that way. And so now yeah. we're on Caleb's turn, and he deployed an Oriac Salvager. And he had the lands I didn't draw, so now he actually does have uh, infinite mana. So let's see where he goes with this. All right, and so with infinite mana, I believe he'll just do a little bit of what we saw earlier and just buy back the, uh, the Mishra's Bauble. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that would be really nice. You know, it's, it's really nice on paper because you can just demonstrate the combo and, and point it out to uh, to the uh, the uh, the opponent. But so Bob does have a force of will here, though. So um, do you do you think that you would have forced the Oriac Salvagers if you were well, uh, Bob earlier? Sadly, the the Cavern of Souls is on human, making the Oriac Salvagers uh, uh, uncounterable. Um, 
I probably would have forced it and just you know got completely <laughs> blown out because yeah. I can't read. But uh, Bob Wong, much better player than me, is going to astutely notice this. Now the question Bob is asking himself, I'm sure, is do I force of will this lion's eye diamond? Um, what well, are the upsides? Like, if uh, what are the ups and downs of doing it? So if you force here, you do stop the combo in its tracks now because um, oh no, you don't because Mox Opal is alive. So that means that he could just get it back and then lion's eye diamond again to get three mana and restart the combo. So. Well, uh, Real quick, I want to point out that the Mox, Mox Opal doesn't have Metalcraft right now. This Lion's Eye Diamond has to resolve for it to get Metalcraft. Okay, so yeah, this will stop the combo cold then. So that means that um, the combo is broken for this turn. Mm -hmm. um, Caleb will be able to restart the combo on the next turn, but okay. that does give Bob a little bit of time. And especially since the slow trips are how he does his draw engine, that right. means he stops at this turn and uh, Caleb combos again next turn with the draw engine. He won't be able to draw until the turn after that. So this, this buys Bob quite a bit of time, but he does really want to hit a um, a land, which he unfortunately did not, drawing okay. another Rupert K. So this turn, I expect Bob might um, cast the Manipulate Fate, exile a bunch of cards, and then um, hopefully draw a land. He really needs to draw a um, couple of critical cards. I mean, he's only got like two turns, right? So he needs to draw the combo now, or... Extremely soon, right? Yeah, I do think he does need to draw the combo soon because even though he did buy himself some time there, um, mm -hmm. and it does seem as people are pointing out in chat that there was perhaps a slight mispay on Caleb's part because uh, when the Lion's Eye Diamond I think resolved the first time, um, he could have used the Mox Opal to float that additional mana correct, so that he correct. could start the combo again without right. having to wait a turn. But that didn't break out down like that, and, and Bob could have forced the Lion's Eye Diamond on the first one. So. Um, now we are where we are here, and uh, Bob does have a little bit of time from that Force of Will, but not a lot. So if I were him, I'd be hoping to uh, draw a land right quick. Yeah. So he does go for the play you described, mm -hmm. and he does get the three Missile Griffins, and he hits the land. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this means that if Bob draws either Tinker, uh, Trinket Mage or uh, Walking Bliss the next turn, he actually wins on the spot. So yep, that's true. Um, but he does need one of those creatures. He does need that that other combo piece to get there. Mm -hmm. So um, I, well, he has four. He has uh, four walking ballistas and two trinket mages, I believe. Okay. So I think that that means that he's on a, a five outer here, and um, I, I imagine that with the number of cards that Caleb can draw this turn, he will be able to um, to get a combo kill going on, on the next turn when he untaps. So this is his big make infinite mana, draw as many cards as I want. Um, mm -hmm. draw basically as many cards as I need to find the combo pieces next turn and then kill you next turn. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so this is basically a race to find a walking ballista at this point. Both players are going to have all the mana they need. They're going to be able to get their combo going as soon as they want. Um, it's just that they need that last combo piece, and each of them are missing it at this point. So I'm going to ask the chat right now if you guys believe, because honestly, I think Caleb might be favored in this position. Bob has exactly one draw step. Can we get one like, one prayer? Rest in peace, Sensei's Divining Top, to see if Bob Wong can draw the card off the off the top of his library. Or if there's something I'm missing, maybe there's another way for him to have gotten it. Um, let's let's talk about one thing that I find extremely interesting, and that's that's there's a card that's just been stuck in Bob's hand, and, and that's Abrupt Decay. This Abrupt Decay has looked... right. Not so hot um, in the face of everything that Caleb is doing. It can't really touch the Oriok Salvagers by definition. Um, mm -hmm. It can't hit the LED to stop the combo. Do you think Bob's going to board out this Abrupt Decay uh, in, in the, in the post-board games? So that's a great question. So um, th this is a little bit of why I would have favored maybe Abrupt Decaying the um, Chalice once you saw that you draw a Brainstorm. You drew a Brainstorm. Uh -huh. so if you hadn't drawn a Brainstorm, sure. Uh, I definitely don't think there's a need to abrupt decay the chalice and playing the Veilful Strix to draw get a draw card makes sense. But sure. considering that you did draw the brainstorm, I think I made it favorite the, the abrupt decay on the chalice, keep the Veilful Strix in hand for the Force of Will, and then try and shuffle back a little bit uh, of those uh, dead cards you have um, from other things uh, on future turns when you when you get to use cast your brainstorm. Um, okay. That being said, do you side out abrupt decay? I don't know. There's a lot of permanence in um, Caleb's deck, uh, and some of them cost three mana. And, and Monster Mentor will just kill you if you take out all of your removal. Like That is something that will happen in a very short true. order. True, true, true. Absolutely. I wonder if Bob has something like Null Rod in his sideboard. Um, is, that, is, that, that, is that a card that we see sometimes in uh, Food Chain side, uh, sideboards? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I'm thinking, and Food Chain doesn't, as far as I know, have artifacts that have activated abilities main deck. 
Um, so it would be a candidate for Null Rod, and it has the mana to be able to, to cast it. So uh, potentially, depending on what uh, what matchups does, it does, uh, Bob doesn't think are strong for Food Chain, he could have one in the, the, the board. I, I don't recall seeing one. Did, did you? No, I mean, we'll figure that out once this, uh, in, in the next couple of turns, I guess. Uh, Jarvis is pointing out in the chat that, of course, I was totally incorrect. Walking Ballista is an artifact with activated ability, and so obviously you don't want to re-ring in Null Rod because it will stop your own combo. So oh, this true, was a silly true. conversation. And here we have on the screen the... Um, the sideboard, and so he does have thought seasons, graph digger cage, uh, pithing needle, which will allow him to target the Oriac salvager. So that obviously comes in, um, and then I guess thought seasons come in, and surgical extraction as well, because surgical extraction will also stop the combo. But I mm -hmm. guess that's one of the reasons that maybe uh, Caleb has Chalice of the Wood, because Chalice of the Wood on one would stop a, a surgical extraction interrupting the combo. Right, and see now we get into this like sort of like leveling argument where you wonder, okay, well, you know, I have a lot of these one drops that you know I have in my sideboard that I want to bring in. Um, but Abrupt Decay is really only, what, good against um, Chalice of the Void, honestly? So I'm wondering then... Why like, Mentor? Oh, yeah, and Mentor. Okay, fine. So so Mentor probably breaks it. But, you know, if he didn't have Mentor, I'd wonder if it's worth it to keep Abrupt Decay in just to, you know, stop Chalice. And whether Caleb even keeps in Chalice in this matchup, like... Um, I mean, this is a deck that's primarily centered around, like, not one-drops. Right. Um, unlike, you know, like Delver or whatever. So Caleb might just think that the Chalices are not uh, good enough. And, Especially um, if he wins this game and he's on the draw. That might additionally favor um, taking it out. So it does seem that there is a Bayful Strix on the top of um, Bob's library. Mm -hmm. So that is his next draw. So that is not the Walking Ballista that he would need. But when he casts Food Chain, it would be a free draw and it does cantrip. So we're basically in the same position we'd be without it. So... Uh, He's still mm. he's still looking to get um, get that combo kill when he does untap, because uh, again Caleb is going to have to pass the turn here. Um, Caleb can draw uh, infinite cards, but they won't be drawn into his hand until next turn. <laughs> I do next. like the storm count forty eight. <laughs> right, <laughs> just to, yep. that's just reminding that's you. pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, and this is I think part of the brilliance of uh, of legacy is that um, you know if you do this combo with uh, uh, I guess what is it Black Lotus in. Um, in Vintage, it's obviously a lot more powerful because you don't have to discard your hand. And mm -hmm. I think that there are other ways to draw cards um, in, in Vintage, potentially, that uh, don't require you to wait until the, your next turn okay. um, with this combo. And so you, I think uh, perhaps Nihil Spellbomb or uh, allows you to draw cards, I think, right now. So you could do it that way. Um, but in, in Legacy, obviously, Black Lotus is banned. And so um, Lion's Eye Diamond is the next one you go to, but it has the downside of, of discarding cards. So... Um, I think that Legacy has a really nice mix of cards that do really powerful effects, but they make you work a little bit harder for it. Right, right. And so we see that Caleb has drawn into the copy of Walking Ballista, means, which means that it, well, on his next turn... Bob untapped. He drew Trinket Mage, because he did do a fetch. As people pointed out in the chat, he did a fetch because he knew it was on the top of his library, and he knew it wasn't going to help him. So he fetched, hit Trinket Mage. He's playing the, the food chain. He's now going to combo off, get infinite mana, cast Trinket Mage, search for Walking Ballista, and then he'll get the combo kill. One turn before, Caleb was going to combo kill him. So that is quite a lot of action just from that one draw, right? There. Can I can I can I take a minute just to say, uh, so lucky? Um, yeah, yeah, you know what? Uh, luck is part of magic, and uh, and Bob set himself up for it, right? Because if he hadn't cracked the fetch, he would have drawn a Baleful Strix, and he mm -hmm. would have gotten another draw, so he w he would have had another chance at it. But you know, um, he he knew it was on top of his library, and, and he took the uh, he took the small percentage that uh, that taking the cracking the fetch EOT gave him, and and that's that that that's a. Uh, that's all they wrote. And so Caleb um, honorably doesn't make us wait through Bob doing the combo kill. Um, Bob, I guess, either revealed or just told Caleb that he had um, the Trinket Mage in his hand, and, and they went on to game two. Right. And so it's crazy that Caleb actually, by giving Bob that extra, I mean, by not floating mana with the Mox Opal, he actually gave Bob the one draw step that he needed right. to win the game. And True. I hear in the other room Bob taking a heavy sigh of relief, I imagine, because that game was like, Way too close. Yeah, so um, even though we were like off on this wild tangent while uh, Caleb was running through his combo, um, yeah, Bob was staying focused. He was like, I need to draw this card. He set himself up to do it, and he did it. And that was pretty exciting in that moment right there. And uh, and as people have said, like, Joaquin Busta is the real deal. There's a lot of ways to make that card just kill people. Right, so and let's talk sideboard. Oh. No, go ahead. Yeah, so, so let's talk sideboards now. Um, if you're on Bob's side from the food chain perspective, what do you think... Uh, what do you feel like bringing in? What do you think is good? Okay, so surgical extractions obviously come in because they allow you to interrupt the combo. Mm -hmm. um, I think you also want to bring in um, 
potentially the thought sees to try and knock key combo pieces out of his hand because okay. uh, Caleb uh, does need a couple of those key pieces to get going, and he can't really cast them until the uh, the third or fourth turn, I think. Um, okay. So having a thought seize would allow you to knock that out or, or get something like that out. Um, a dish, other than that, I, I do like taking out Baleful Strix because again, you're not trying to block their creatures attacking, and if the mentor is going bananas, the Baleful Strix does very little. So mm-hmm. I think to take that out makes sense. Um, so that's Bob's side. What about uh, on Caleb's side? What do you think you would do if you were him? Well, I can tell you what he's already done. He's definitely taken out some copies of Swords to Plowshares, as well as Gitaxian Probe, I believe, bringing in three copies of either Swan Cannonist, a copy of Disenchant to interact with Food Chain, and um, I don't know if I see what else he's brought in. Uh, well, he took out seven cards. I'm assuming there are two more cards that he brought in, but I do like the interactive spells that he's brought in to you know prevent Bob from just completely massacring him you know, went just willy nilly. The good thing is about either one Canonist in this deck is that it is actually a, a an asymmetric effect because right. the combo that you're using with Oriac Salvagers is just mono artifact. So that's uh, that's that's pretty sweet there. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, doesn't either one Canonist stop cards from being cast? And I believe Oriac Salvager just puts them onto the battlefield. Um, that one is a bit too much magic knowledge for me. I'd have no, to see the text. I, I could be wrong. Oryx Salvager might put it into your hand. I'm not familiar with it enough. I'm to, pretty sure, uh, yeah, Oryx Salvager puts it into your hand, yeah. It does? Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so... Yep, you're right. Uh, your graveyard to your hand. So, yeah, so that, that, that would stop um, with Aether Swan Cannons on the battlefield if they weren't artifacts. But you are right. It, it is asymmetrical in that regard. And so that's that's a really big, um, really big kind of, like, trump card in this mirror, then. If you have a, a, a creature that you can play and it'll hold your opponent's combo but not your own, that's great. Right. So both players are going to draw their seven hands. We're going to look at Mulligans here. How do you feel about Caleb's hand? Uh, and how do you feel about Bob's hand? So um, let's jump to Bob's hand because he's on the play here. So, uh, or sorry, I mean Caleb's hand. Um, so Caleb's hand, I think, is good. It's got mm-hmm. a little bit of cantrip, some LEDs. It's got the Walking Ballista and a Monster and Mentor. So he okay. can play this turn one Ballista, and on turn two he can play a Mentor and then make three monks. And then he can start like searching for the combo with his cantrip. So I like that. Uh, what about Bob's hand? Well, see, Bob has um, some pretty good sideboard cards that he's drawn. He's drawn the Surgical Extraction to stop the combo. He's also got the Pithing Needle to, I guess he's going to name Walking Ballista here. Uh, Oriox Salvagers, okay, that's fine too. Um, And then, let's see, the one card that I actually really like in Bob's hand that we didn't actually talk about, that's that's Leovold, yeah. True. And uh, Leovold seems like it can do some work here. I I think you're absolutely right, because it stops the slow trips from Caleb, so he'll get to draw one, because he draws them on uh, Bob's turn when he untaps. Um, mm-hmm. So he would get to draw one, but he doesn't get to draw any of the rest. So Leovold is a great way to shut down the draw engine to find the rest of his combo if he okay. only has the draw engine part of the, of the uh, combo. But So here we're seeing one of those things that I was talking about before, which is where if you set out your uh, Abrupt Decays or your removal, um, yeah. and then the combo deck plays Monster Mentor on turn two, and like what do you do? You know, So uh, yeah. I think you have to force a little here, because if you don't have any removal in your deck, that card will just kill you. Right, yeah, and I think um, this is where Caleb is trying to catch Bob with his pants down, but Bob right. is like, nope, got the belt. Force of Will, pitch this Trinket Mage. Yeah, I mean, again, showing the beauty of Force of Will, like countering spells is uh, the maximum flexibility you can get. If they're on mm-hmm. the stack, they're live to be and, hit. By the and, I, and I have to imagine, you know, Bob may have brought in copies of Toxic Deluge too, just like, because yep. he knows about the Monastery Mentors from the last match, and maybe he's just thinking, you know what, I could either Force of Will this, or I could, you know, let it resolve and try to draw into the Toxic Deluge, but why is on Bob for countering the the uh, the monastery mentor? Because Caleb's hand is loaded with um, uh, enablers for uh, you know just monk babies and stuff right. like that. So yeah, true. Also, the other thing is that you don't want to name um, walking ballista if you're Bob because you got walking ballistas in your own deck. Oh, true, true. Yeah, that guy. That's the dumbest thing I could have said. Yeah, I mean, I said some pretty dumb things earlier, so I'm I'm not too worried. Um, but yeah, so okay, so now we've had a little bit of a back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um. We are going to uh, go to um, Bob's turn, and okay. he's going to cast Surgical Extraction, targeting the Monastery Mentor. So he just doesn't want any more of that nonsense. He wants that to be done. He'll see uh, uh, Caleb's hand, and this is a, a good situation for Bob to be in, because with a Pithing Needle naming Oriac Salvagers and Surgically Extracting Monastery Mentor, that does significantly narrow the avenues that Caleb has to win from his Bomberman deck. Right, I mean, Caleb does still have that copy of Disenchant in his deck, plus whatever, you know, artifact removal that he might have. Um, one thing to note is that the Mishra's Bauble that Caleb uh, played on his turn, um, played last, sorry, revealed a Deathrite Shaman. Right. 
But the question um, is, do you think Bob would want to draw that? Because I don't think he's drawn yet this turn. Is that correct? Well, it's, it looks like it's turn three, Caleb, um, on his draw step. Mm-hmm. Which makes the most sense for casting the surgical, surgical extraction, because in case right, right. Caleb drew a copy of Monastery Mentor, yeah. Or, yeah. Nab that, too. Um, okay. So, so here's a situation where the combo kill would be in place if it weren't for Pithing Needle. Right, right. So as soon as Caleb draws an answer to this uh, Pithing Needle, looks like he will you know, just win the game on the spot. That being said... So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that I only saw one disenchant in Caleb's sideboard. Is that true? Uh, that's all I saw too. Um, so, but, and I don't, and I, I don't think he'd run engineered explosives with all these zero um, uh, CMC artifacts and one CMC artifacts. Maybe he does, but um, how does he get this pithing needle off the board if he doesn't draw his disenchant? Well, I mean, engineered explosives isn't the craziest because you do have Wardiox salvagers to uh, rebuy. Okay, so um, here we go. Here we, here we have it in front of us. So it's one disenchant, no, um, no. You're right. You're right about that. It's not the craziest, but no, no, no uh, uh, engineered explosives. So now with that plus the Leovold, it's. The noose is tightening around Caleb's neck. Bob has very effectively cut off his uh, his lines here. Uh, yeah, and this is interesting too. Well, I I will say one thing earlier about the uh, the needle on ballista play. As as dumb as it sounds, I mean, do, do, I would imagine that Bob's deck is actually just a better Jun deck, right? So theoretically, and this is this is probably like completely backwards logic, but if you know Bob does draw like a manipulate fate, he can start ca casting Griffins and just like beating down while also interacting with uh, the combo. That being said, I, I still think the name on Oryx Salvagers is very good and probably better. So, um... Yeah, so I do agree with you that, that like there are situations where you may want to name um, Walking Ballista with Pithing Needle, even though you have it in your deck. But um, at, at that kind of point in the game where you haven't, for certain, like taken care of their mentors, I don't think he'd surgical it yet. I'm not even sure if he had surgical it sure, sure, sure. yet. Yeah, you're, pro you're probably in such a bad position. Or you'd have to be in like a really, really bad position for that to right, uh, right. Yeah, make a difference. And um, meanwhile, it looks like Caleb is the... Um, I don't want to say driver's seat, but he's able to chip in for two damage a turn, um, given that uh, yeah, Leopold this, can't block. This is a, a really nice thing here that happens, is that um, now that these combo decks are kind of like, they don't haven't quite found their footing, they don't have their, they're not at full steam, but they still have creatures on the battlefields, and creatures can always attack and block. That's something they can always do. So now we get down to a, like a good old-fashioned, like, uh, you know, 3v3 versus 2v4 with like a 1-1 one -one that can deal one damage, like a kind of like limited environment style board. Yeah, um, as, as Jarvis mentioned, PT draft magic. Right, right, exactly. But uh, one big thing about the Trump here is, though, is that since uh, Walking Ballista is still alive, Caleb can just EOT activate it and grow that Ballista every turn. And yeah. so Bob does need draws here, because as it is on the board, Caleb will probably kill him with attacks in about two or three turns. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this this Walking Ballista... Yeah, I mean, I guess it could swing right... No, I think if you're Caleb, you want Walking Ballista is worth way more to you than... Uh, uh, than it is to than, than Bob's Leopold is so Absolutely. probably just yeah especially since again I think that Bob did take out the Abrupt Decays mm -hmm. uh, I'm not certain on that but I think he did and um, again like Walking Ballista if you just give it a turn you know give it lots of turns and let it grow like having it be a creature that can't be blocked and, and traded with is huge yeah. and, and if, it, if it does come down to it you know it can get in there for the last three or four points of damage once, uh, once uh, Bob is a little bit lower so uh, Bob is in a, a slightly precarious place he does need some draws here True. I mean, in theory, uh, yeah, so Caleb's going to attack with the Walking oh. Ballista here, and Do you the like reason to... Well, see, he can always crack the LEDs for mana. It's not like the Mox Opal and the Chalice in his hand are doing anything, so that's an extra extra six mana, and Bob's not going to actually be able to block with the Leobold profitably anyways. So, why can't he just put it in front of... Uh, oh, do you pump the Walking Ballista with just mana, or does it have to tap for it? Uh, just, just mana, yeah. Just mana. Uh, got so it. You, so it's, uh, it's unlike that other artifact that it adds. Hanger back walker, right. right. Hanger back walker has to, uh, yeah. Got it. Okay. I was unaware of that. So that is a good point. So then, yeah, getting in makes a lot more sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then, as you said, there are no profitable block for, uh, blocks for Bob there, so he has to just take it. Right. Okay. Chalice of the Void for three. So now we have the reverse situation where, um, Bob has locked out, uh, some of Caleb's combo angles, and now Caleb is locking out Bob's combo angles. Yeah, and this Chalice on three actually, ooh, well. Ooh. So not only can he not play it because he has a legendary Leobold on his own, but it's also a Chalice on three. That yeah. is not great for Bob. Yeah, it's not looking great for him. I wonder um, what he could possibly draw in this situation to come back from behind. 
Uh, well, I would have said food chain, but now that there's a, a Chalice of the Void on three, that's not a live draw. Um, yeah, and I mean, like, even the creatures aren't aren't that great. Like, the only creature that hit a, a Toxic Deluge, but I guess now that Caleb untaps, he has so much mana, he could probably kill him. Yeah, by Deluge, Deluge, the, also, uh, Deluge also a three, so mm. even that's not an out. Uh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and Bob seems to be dead on board here. This is what two points plus two points yeah, plus however much good. mana, and then you yeah. just. Uh, I mean, Bob gets to draw a bunch of cards when um, the Walking Ballista will try and remove the counters, but I don't think he'll be able to draw anything that will stop it. Mm, true. Yeah, so I, I I guess this is this is a little bit of why I wasn't certain that I wanted to cut the Walking Ballistas because Caleb's creatures do just they do things on their own too. Walking Ballista is good. Monterey Mentor is good. Um, like it would have been real nice to not have to force that monster mentor. Yeah, this this deck that Caleb has selected actually has a surprising amount of play to it. I mean, like on paper, you look at it and you're just like, puke. What is this? Right. But, right. Like watching Caleb play this, it's just like, this is a lot of stuff that I just didn't see. Like all these beautiful synergies and like you know the standalone value that each card presents or uh, most of the cards present is is you can't you can't really ignore that. Yeah, so that's true. Um, on the other hand, though, um, these have been combo matchups uh, for Bomberman, and so um, having those creatures that are just on the battlefield for Bomberman that can kind of just get in there are also mm -hmm. pretty relevant. Against a, a different deck that maybe has its own creatures that are good, uh, efficient at fighting and that kind of thing, and has removal, that you know that maybe wouldn't have been as effective of a, of a, of a strategy. All right, so we're going to move back into game three, and I apologize before I mentioned that Caleb boarded out some Swords to Plowshares, but actually they're in the sideboard. It doesn't make sense, too much sense, to play Swords to Plowshares in your Chalice of the Void combo deck. Um, uh, playing them in the sideboard makes sense. I, I do like doing that, and I agree with Caleb. In the that. sideboard, for sure, for sure, yeah. Um, okay. But we're, we're going to take a look at uh, sideboarding, and it seems both players will maybe recalibrate. Um, let's yeah. look at Bob. So immediately you see him bring back in those four Abrupt Decay, which I yeah. think makes a lot of sense. So that's back in there. He saw Chalice be a problem. He clearly saw that Monster Mentor was a problem. And then um, he also saw that, uh, that potentially like hitting a Walking Blister or something could be good. And he hasn't seen it yet, I don't think. And I don't think he knows that it's in um, Caleb's deck because the deck lists are, uh, are hidden. Secret information. But uh, Caleb also has the, the Aether Swarm Cannonist, which will stop his combo. And Abrupt Decay kills that. Correct. So correct. Uh, what, about, what about Caleb's side? What, what tweaks is he making? So Caleb, I don't think he's switched anything out yet. Um, I still see, you know, the the disenchantment three cards you mentioned, and then just the four Gitaxian probes that are in the sideboard. Um, maybe he cut like a basic planes for something, or maybe the planes was in the sideboard. But yeah, yeah. I, the, I the think that he had a Caracas actually in the sideboard, and I think he swapped the Caracas in the planes. Okay, that makes sense. I think. Yep, that that's um, a astute pickup. Yeah. So. Um, so in that situation, um, I think that he's bringing the Crocus in for the Leovold. And since the, he knows that Food Chain doesn't play Wasteland, he's not afraid of his mana getting attacked like that. Right. Um, you know, Crocus is not great against Leovold, but it does mean that he could bounce the Leovold um, to get himself to get his cantrip strong again on that, that untapped draw. So I sure. do like bringing it in. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um, and here we go. Starting hands. What do you think? All right, so Bob is going to be on the play for this game, and his hand looks pretty good. He's got some selection and double brainstorm. He's got a walking ballista of his own, and he's got the food chain. So, I mean, if I'm Bob, I snap keep this hand. Yep. Um, how do you feel about Caleb's hand? So Yeah, I also snap keep it in Bob's hand. Now, so Caleb's hand, um, it's a little light on action. It's got the turn one chalice, which I like, and probably is what would lead me to keep it, which I think is also the case for Caleb. But mm -hmm. it only has one cantrip, and other than that, it's just mana sources. So right. if he gets his turn one play forced or uh, decayed on the next turn, he could be in some trouble. So here we go. Turn one chalice. This is always yep. a great thing to see. Um, and uh, do you think that Bob will force it? Well, I think Bob's going to fire a brainstorm off first um, just yep. to see if he You're maybe right. draws into an abrupt decay. Uh, okay. So he doesn't. He draws a second yeah. ballista, which I don't think the second one gives him any value, really. So um, I could see him putting one ballista back and potentially one island. Mm-hmm. Of critical note, Bob did draw the Polluted Delta off the Brainstorm, so next turn he'll be able to shuffle like, one of the cards that he decides to put back. Yeah. Not quite the um, perfect Brainstorm, because you know he has to draw one of the cards that he puts back, but pretty close, especially when you have a, a relevant spell on the stack that you want to potentially deal with. Okay, so he did not force it. So he's deciding that, you know what, I put my four Abrupt Decays back in the deck, um, I I'm just going to like let this resolve and keep my Force Will plus Blue card and Brainstorm for something else. Right. And so I think the logic behind this decision is that, you know, I have a force of will in my hand. Um, if I if I force a will pitch the brainstorm to stop the chalice of the void, I, I would much rather just draw like draw into the abrupt decay and save the force of will for something else. 
Okay. So it seems that we did have those two um, artifact slow trips uh, cracked by um, Caleb, and he mm -hmm. saw a delta on the top of um, Bob's library and a, a walking ballista on the top of... Uh, I, I'm not sure if that was Bob's library or... I think he saw the walking ballista in Bob's hand. Right, okay. Right, yeah, use the Urza to see the ballista and then the Mishra to see the uh, the delta. Got it. And, and Bob is going to untap, play polluted delta, slam the... Ooh. Uh, ooh. ooh. Ugh. Again, so... Ah. This is what I was talking about before. You got to have a replicas in there because, like, Monster and Mentor will just kill you. It's, yeah. And again, you see here, Bob immediately, like, snap force. Like, Monster and Mentor will kill me. I can't let it resolve. Got to go. So, yeah, and I think Bob here is rewarded for not force pitching Brainstorm to stop the chalice, but that immediate draw of uh, Death Ride Shaman is. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. So great. So, Bob's got. Two thirds of the combo here. All he's missing is one creature that he can exile uh, with food chain and cast from exile to get infinite mana. Now, the nice thing about missing that particular piece of the combo is that he has, I believe, seven or eight copies of it because Manipulate Fate will allow him to find that, those cards. Mm -hmm. So, as opposed to missing like a food chain, which he only has four copies of, or a walking ballista, which he only has six copies of because he has the four ballista plus two trinket mage, he has yeah. eight copies or so to find the other, the mana component of this combo. So, Right. I mean, the awkward thing is that Walking Ballista doesn't generate as much mana as you pour into it. I mean, it's got a CMC of zero, so I imagine it just you know gives you one mana. But that's all you really need in this situation to cast your Mist Holographin or your Eternal Scourge um, and and uh, loop infinitely. True. True. Um, so yeah. So if if Bob does draw a Manipulate Fate or Eternal mm -hmm. Scourge or something like that, I do think that he has got a combo kill. Um, yeah. On the other side, we have Caleb, who had that second mentor, getting it down there. No more force. It's on the board. Uh, right. lands, uh, Lotus Petal is being cast. That's triggering getting a monk. Um, mm -hmm. And so Caleb also does have a Aureak Salvagers. Um, he doesn't have a Lion's Eye Diamond, so he doesn't have the infinite mana component for him getting infinite monks, but uh, he, he does have some action there on his side. So now it'll be, uh, it'll be a little Ooh. bit draw dependent here, so we'll see what happens. Right, and so Bob draws a food chain for turn. I wonder... Do you think there's any merit to uh, hopping off? No, I don't think it makes sense to use the ballista for anything. I would just recast the, uh, just sorry, cast the second food chain. But I was, I was wondering, you know, you if you if this mentor is really that much of a problem, you could you could get it off the board if you wanted to, but probably not not the the best line towards winning the game, which is the ultimate. True, goal. true. Um, so I guess Bob doesn't know what's in um, Caleb's deck. So he goes for the second food chain to like make sure that like a disenchant or some enchantment removal won't mm -hmm. hold him for another turn um, for the combo. So yeah. um, and that makes sense, I guess, to me. I don't think that you need to kill mentor unless there's some other part of Caleb's deck that's providing recurring value or ways to get monk triggers. But right. now that he's playing Oryx Salvager, he's providing exactly that thing. So even if it's slow, he can still return um, cantrips back every turn um, from the graveyard for one colorless plus one white just to draw cards. Okay, uh, and he, so he, he can he can also just like um, I think it's one white to just create prowess by sacking the petal, right? Um, so then you turning it and then casting it. Okay, all right. So that gives uh, that gives you uh, damage, right? So I guess like again, so um, I don't necessarily dislike not playing the second walking ballista or like not buffing the walking ballista to kill the mentor because uh -huh. until the Aureus Salvagers, there really wasn't um, you weren't you weren't sure if Bob could make lots of monks. But now that it's apparent that you can, he can make lots of monks, I think that we'll see Bob actually um, probably play a land, uh, buff up the Walking Ballista, um, make an attack, and probably try and kill the Mentor with the tokens. Or the uh, counters, rather. Okay. But here we see uh, Bob has drawn a fourth land, and this is going to be pretty, pretty critical because it allows him to remove this Monastery Mentor from the table. And I like, I like what Bob is doing here. He's electing to pump up the first... Uh, the one that the ballista that's already in play, as opposed to playing the second one, and this keeps him alive, uh, protected from uh, you know um, whatever removal spells that Caleb might have uh, on his yep. side of the deck. I think that makes sense. And if you are killing, uh, if Bob is killing with the combo, uh, the food chain combo kill, he mm -hmm. will have infinite mana. So being able, having the walking ballista in his hand, um, rather than the battlefield, is not going to make any difference when he goes to actually cast it. Um, right. Okay. So uh, it does look like that. Uh, Bob might be. Is Bob uh, dead on board? It's getting close. Um, so let's see. He's got two monk tokens with prowess and two mm -hmm. damage from the Oriac Salvager. So that's four. 
So no, he so he needs uh, a bunch of triggers here, but he has a walking blister in his hand. And so the walking blister will give um, not give a trigger, but will allow him to get these prowess. Uh... Oh, okay. So he's going for the prowess trigger. So he's just gonna six mana, six prowess triggers. Okay, this is what I was talking about earlier. So you play the lotus petal, you crack it for white, mm -hmm. you use Ori Salvager, return it, and then you get one mana. So each time you're you're paying one mana to do this, kind of like the old top trick when you had two tops, you could tap one, draw, put the other one on top, and then draw the other top, and then cast it, and you just get one mana to get a prowess trigger. So he's okay. doing the same thing, but with lotus petal. And so there's two monks. <laughs> that the, each each prowess trigger is two extra damage. Uh, Bob's at twelve. He does it six times. Uh, gets six prowess triggers and swings in with the monks and the Oryx Salvagers, and that's game. So in Magic the Gathering. Three, yeah, right. Magic like, the Gathering. Yeah. Wow. So All Caleb, right. Caleb's combo decks look really resilient here. Uh, yeah. I think two or three or four out of the times that he killed Bob, it was not with the infinite mana walking blister kill. It was. I'm just gonna make some monks and just attack you. Just take my bat and beat you like a yeah, couple or times. Yeah, I'm just gonna take you know? my walking blister and make it big enough, and then attack you, and then remove some counters to ping you for the last couple points of damage. So, so actually, because Caleb played the other one, Candice, do you think he uh, ran out of mana or didn't have oh, enough mana? I think you're right. I, he did. So that, I think that, that was another uh, another slight misplay by Caleb because unless I'm missing something, he could have just done it. Um, he could have just done it one, two more times instead of playing. He just weren't canonist. He, maybe he got a little bit too worried about uh, what Bob could do to him rather than think about what he could do to Bob. Yeah. yeah. I've definitely been in that situation uh, plenty of times. Yeah, me too. But, uh, you know, Bob just drew another Death Strike Shaman and with Chalice on one, that doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so... Yep. So, okay, here's something I don't understand. Why didn't Bob in... Oh, because he's a two. Okay, so yeah, even yeah. if he responded to the first prowess trigger by trying to kill the two monks... Mm -hmm. uh, the other Oryx Salvage or Nethus from Canada will be able to attack in for two damage. And, yep, 2-4 and beatdown. So this was actually... So I'm not going to lie, Tom. I'm uh, at the edge of my seat slightly. Um, please tell me... It's, this deck that Caleb is playing right now, I have not seen this before. And I, I, I honestly would be very excited if he's able to also 3-0... You know, against Bob. This is, I mean, this is this is the trend. Apparently, that's what all the cool kids do. You know, they're just like three zero in the quarterfinal. Um, yeah. So um, I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out. We'll see. So um, it'd be great to see Caleb do that. I kind of want to see a little bit more of the decks that Caleb has in store because he's got some really spice going on here. And I'd like to see what else he's thought up with. But mm -hmm. uh, we will get our next matchup here on screen here and again in a minute. And unfortunately, Anurag I think is going to step out, and we're going to bring in Jarvis for the next match. All right. Well, I'll see you later then. Yeah, um, no, it's been great commentating with you, and I'll, I'm sure I'll see you soon. You'll be yep. back on later tonight, right? Uh, if if assuming there are matches to commentate, but yeah. Okay. So one All thing right. is, I think that Bob's going to have Delver going here. So uh, maybe he'll Ooh. just like go on a streak with Delver. All right, I'll be watching. Yeah, I rock. Yep. All right, we're back. I'm here with Thomas Keating. Probably hey, Jarvis, how's see, it going? Uh, sorry, we're probably going to see Bob play a Delver deck as his last deck, is my guess. Yeah, that was my prediction at the end of the last uh, match as well. Uh, Bob is known as a Delver specialist, and here we go. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this deck? I know you were kind of playing a modified version earlier this evening. Yeah, so this is basically as stock as it gets. Uh, in the flex slots Bob has, he's playing a Fatal Push and a Spell Pierce, and he has the traditional uh, three Volcanic, two C, one Trop mana base. Yep, looks pretty stock to me. Um, one thing we see is that we do see that this is a Cabal Therapy main, not Stifle main, Grixis right. Delver variant. So some people would prefer the, um, the Stifle variant. 
I myself prefer the, the, the slightly more mid rangey perhaps some people describe it as. I don't know if that's really accurate, but the, the, the interaction of Cabal Therapy plus uh, Jutax and Probe and Young Paramaster is something that appeals to me more than Stifle myself. But uh, Stifle can get people. Yeah, Bob does have four Pyromancer, which is not that stock. Most of the lists are three Pyromancer or one true name. True. I think it is to just maximize the Cabal Therapy aspect of the deck. I think that's true, too. I also think that since um, Bob knew his opponent, and I think he knows that Caleb doesn't really like to play regular creature midrange type decks, yeah. maybe he was thinking, like, against combo decks, Pyromancer would be better, probably, and against uh, control decks, Pyromancer is also probably better. So maybe okay. that was his thought process. Those are good points. All right. Okay. Down to the match. Here we go. So why don't you run through um, Bob's hand? Bob's hand, I would never mulligan. Yeah, uh, that's it, uh, it pretty has. Amazing. It has three lands, uh, Brainstorm, Delver, Deathrite, Angler. And yep. Philip's hand has, ooh, potentially a turn one Mentor if he wants to do it. Yeah, so, okay, so let's see. So 100% agree with you, Grixis Delver, amazing hand. You have three threats. Um, uh, you, uh, you have the thing you, I, I, I always want to see turn one when I'm playing Delver is uh, Deathrite Shaman. Used to be Delver of Secrets, but now there's Deathrite Shaman on the format. I always want to see Deathrite over... Um, Delver to get that mono advantage. Um, and then you have a brainstorm, so you can shuffle back some of those fetches or any pieces that you don't need, like if you draw removal and there's no threats, that kind of thing. So uh, Bob's very solid hand. Um, on Caleb's side, it's uh, I guess he's relying on his petals for uh, and Lion's Eye Diamond for white mana, but he doesn't need all that much of it, so that should be fine. Right. I think Caleb knows that he should just slam this here. It doesn't really get better for him. Right. Because yeah, he does exactly that. Because he talking to dazes and stuff, you wait. And yeah. The Mentor resolved. I think Bob is just going to take an unreal beating from this. And look at Caleb's follow-up is a Ballista for two through oh, wow. days. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so that was quite an explosive start for Caleb. So he dumped his hand on the board. He got that turn one Mentor and then a bunch of other spells to get trigger um, the Monk tokens. And so he didn't know what Bob was playing, but he had a good guess that Bob was probably playing Delver on his third, uh, third, yeah, third yeah. deck. K Caleb knows his... Knows that Bob is a Delver. Right. right. Yeah, so, he knows his like, two players. I think Caleb is actually likely to play Chalice on one and yep. Ballista for one. Yeah, so that's one of the downsides of the Grixis Delver deck. And one of the reasons that I kind of myself prefer Buck Delver over it right now um, is that, uh, as far as I know, it has no main deck way to res uh, to answer a resolved Chalice. And it it's, has so yeah. many one mana spells. Yeah, you kind of just have to. Hope you don't play against too many of those things, I think, when you're playing Grixis. Post-board, you can play things like Ancient Grudge, which I was playing, or whatever. Like, th There's plenty of answers if you want them. Just, I think, starting them in Grixis is not as good as having Abrupt Decay and, uh, you know, Sultai. I absolutely 100% agree with you. Um, you can't play like Ancient Grudge and stuff main deck in Grixis, but you can play Abrupt Decay main in uh, in Bug Delver. But yeah, I do know that Bob likes um, Ancient or sorry Ancient Grudge in the side of Grixis Delver quite a lot. I think we saw him sporting two copies, so that'll definitely be coming in. Um, but yeah. you know, this is like this is turn two for Bob on the untap, and look at the board he's facing down. Yeah, there's no way out yeah. of that palace. It Caleb had what I would describe as a vintage hand, actually. I agree with you 100%. That like, looked a lot like vintage Mentor, except instead of having blue card draw spells, he just had mediocre, like, one-time use Moxon. Which is kind right. of funny to think about it that way. But uh, You know, yeah, it's true. I mean, one-time use Moxon is good enough to make all those monk tokens, and uh, without any removal from Bob's side, and with that follow-up Chalice and Walking Ballista... That definitely would stop whatever Bob could do. So I definitely understand the concession there. So turning to the sideboard, if you're Bob, what do you bring in? Okay, so Bob's bringing in Fire Covenant, probably Ancient Grudge if it's in his sideboard. Oh, and I don't necessarily see it. It's got to be down there already. You're already in, right? If he has a Grudge, it's definitely sided in, but I don't see it currently. Hmm. I'd be surprised at that. I know that Bob usually likes to play at least two Grudge on his Grixis Delver sideboard. Maybe he was going uh, Maybe he thought that uh, he could put some real reads on on what Caleb was playing and decided not to bring him. But uh, I'm not certain about that. Okay, so it does look like he brought in Fire Covenant to try and like deal with these mess, uh, these wide board states that uh, Caleb can create with Monster Mentor. What about on uh, Caleb's side? So Caleb looks like he sided out probes for Swords to Plowshares. And didn't touch the rest of his deck, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think in a deck like that, most of your cards are based on getting 
to your engine or interacting with your engine. So if you right. cut too many of them, your deck is not going to work correctly. Okay, I agree with that. So there is one thing I think we're seeing here is that we are bringing in the source of posture. So that's a way to like maybe alleviate a little bit of the pressure that Bob could be putting on by getting an early Death Ride Shaman, oh sorry, a Delver of Secrets or a creature just down on the board while Caleb is still setting up. But how do you feel about that? I know that, um, you know, people say that it's a Nambo of like source of plowshares and Chalice of the Void together. I've done it in the past with Aggro Loam, um, play some uh, source of plowshares in the board and then, you know, sometimes you side out the Chalices and you need good, uh, good, you know, generic good cards and sometimes you know against something like rixus dover if you have a chalice on one you're in a great state you're probably going to win anyway so even if you have a dead card in your hand you're probably okay uh, yeah speaking of the devil yeah uh this is also awkward that his only white mana is mox opal true true so last round that wasn't that important all he needed to cast was one white spell yeah. get his mentor on the battlefield and that was enough but uh that would not be the case in this game yeah what about Bob's hand? Bob's hand, I think you unhappily keep, is how I would describe that hand. Yeah, but, but you know, unhappily, no... unhappily keeping is not where you want to be in the last game, potentially, if you're playing yeah, like... But I, I think it's within the bounds of hands you're supposed to keep, but you're really relying on Ponder to find you something good. Four lands is a lot of lands for that deck. Yeah, it is. So, and without Brainstorm, you can't put them back, so you, they're just in your hand until you draw a Brainstorm. But he does have all cantrips, and so he's leading off with a probe, and now he gets to see Caleb's hand. So he sees that there's a, a Chalice of the Void in his hand, but no way to cast it on turn one. So he knows that he'll get to cast a Ponder this turn, and then probably a one mana spell next turn, unless Caleb draws a Soul Land or a Lotus Petal or something like that. Man, Bob, another land. <laughs> yeah, that's not what you want to see. Nope. But yeah, I mean, so do you have faith? I mean, Bob could just win this game, win the next game, and then he'd have to win, I guess, uh, two matches in a row. But so. Oh, jeez. Killed Drew City of Traders. Oh, my goodness. He did draw the soul land that we were potentially hypothesizing last turn. Oh, this looks like a disaster for Bob. So now he plays City of Traders, and I think he just runs out the, the chalice. I mean, you have to be a little bit afraid of days, but, you know, if you have a way to just potentially lock Bob out, I think you got to take it, right? Yeah, I think by... Waiting is not really that... Ooh. Kill of his waiting. Interesting. So he's just respecting days. Okay. Okay, so he's respecting days. Um, I guess I guess there's also a consideration that uh, if he plays the Chalice before his Swords to Plowshares, he won't be able to kill a creature. Yeah. So if Bob potentially untapped and played a Young Pyromancer, that could be a problem. I, I think that's kind of not good logic because you don't even have the White Source... For your swords yet? That's true. I, I definitely agree with you that um, I don't think that that is the primary reason not to do it. I definitely think it's respecting days is why you wouldn't want to cast it there. But it could be a small consideration. But so here's the ponder from Bob. So he sees a Jataxian probe, an underground sea, and a wasteland. What are your thoughts? For me, I think that's maybe a take the probe, play a fetch land, fetch, and then probe, or potentially a shuffle. What do you think? So you probed Caleb and saw he only had two lands. So I think there's actually merit to keeping oh, the point. wasteland. True, so you did not see him draw the City of Traders. Okay, right. that's a good point. So but, do you then draw the Wasteland? And, yeah, okay, so he does that. So he draws the Wasteland, and he goes after the Cavern. And so he yeah. thinks that uh, Caleb only has one land now and is not able to cast the Chalice of Wood. So now Caleb's in the same situation. Do you try again now, or do you still respect days and wait? If, well, you're exactly in the same situation, and now he's going to do it, which probably means he was supposed to do it last turn, but it's... Luckily for Kilo, Bob doesn't have a daze or a force right. for no. this. So I do think yeah. I agree with you. If you have a potential way to just like get that haymaker on the battlefield and just end the game, make them have it. Just cast it and just go for it. Um, especially with the second draw of the Chalice of the Void, which might yeah. be why he decided to go for it. Because if this one gets dazed, I'll just play another one next turn. But uh, Bob's in a real tight spot here already. Got a lot of lands he doesn't really need. He's got a, he's got a, a Vindalian Click going for him, which is nice. But um, now that uh, Kilo's going to be able to play that Mox Opal and have mana, it's looking so real rough. What you're actually going to see Caleb do is play the Salvagers right. on Opal and Cavern Naming Human. Yep, absolutely. That way it's uncounterable. He can just start rebuying the bobble yep. every turn. Well, so the other thing is that unless I'm mistaken, Oryx Salvager has four toughness and Bob's main removal is Lightning Bolt. So not only is it turned off because of Chalice of the Void, but even if it wasn't, Oryx Salvager is safe from it. And with so, the Cavern of Souls providing counter, uh, you know, protecting from counters, counters I mm -hmm. think that there's just no way for Bob to stop this. Bob's other one-mana removal spell is Fatal Push with alongside a fetch okay. to kill it. 
Yes. But again, Charles, Charles on one, not having any of that. Okay, so now we've got the kind of situation where um, Caleb's got time. So the Chalice of the Void stops a lot of Bob's potential plays, and it'll allow Caleb to play, as you said, the uh, I'm just going to play some cantrips every turn and, and just draw one card and see what you're up to, and eventually I'll draw some more lands and I'll draw some action, and, and then we'll see what's up. So this Vendelium Quick, I think, is Bob's best chance at victory, I think. I think you're right. So um, so that means that, I guess, because Swords of Plasters is offline, Bob's hoping that he'll get this click uh, on the board and just go all the way. Is or, or it could be good. DG right now. So Caleb can actually go infinite twice to make Walking Ballista infinitely large twice. Why would you need to make it infinitely large twice? Surely once is enough. <laughs> no, I mean, it will get forced the first time, then he has to redo all of it. Oh, I see what you're saying. But can't he just... <laughs> okay. I, oh, I see what you're saying. I mean... I got you. I got you. Caleb has the win. That was a great draw for him right there. Right. Yep. It was definitely a great draw. He drew pieces he needed. Yeah. Um, he had the Chalice, which is uh, great against Greg Sestelver, and Bob had a hand that lined up early and had a lot of land. So yeah. it looks like uh, Caleb's going to have to run through this. It's going to take a little bit of time, but um, it does look like Greg Sestelver by Bob Huang might be out. So also amusingly, Bob can just see that he's checkmated, and if he's nice enough to concede, he can concede here because all of Caleb's cards are in the graveyard. Yeah, uh, yeah, he does. Like Caleb has no longer any revealed inform or sorry, secret hidden information. So Bob does know his fate. Um, he'll yeah. probably just be thinking through some lines right now, making sure that there's no way that he can get out of this with Force of Will. But as you said, because uh, Caleb can go infinite twice, that is, make an infinitely large walking ballista, have a counter, yeah. but leave some mana in his pool, and then do it again after the counter spell. That does mean that Bob is just dead. Um, do you yeah. think that there's some merit to Bob having potentially tried to go for a V click on the draw step? In this turn? Yeah, I think so, because you're so exposed to Lion's Eye Diamond right there. That, right. Yeah, uh, I, do think, I do think that I probably would have gone for the click there. Um, just because, you know, playing against a combo deck, especially if they have part of their combo already on the battlefield, you know that, and you see that they have the third piece um, and the Walking Ballista in their hand, you know that, like, one draw could be, you know, they could just draw and have it. Um, the chances aren't high that he would immediately hit that, uh, you know, one of, uh, sorry, that four right. of Lion's Eye Diamond, but it can happen, and it did. Chat brings up a good point. We could have clicked our opponent with Lion's Eye Diamond on the stack. That's true. So it does seem that there are a, a few uh, tricks here with the click they could have gone for. So the one issue with that is it doesn't really save him that much, because Kilt could just draw most of his deck with Mishra's Bobble. True, but it would give him a turn, though, right? I guess yeah, that's like, what well, are you going to yeah. do a turn with no right, pressure right. and just a 3 1? No, nope, yeah, you're right. That that would have uh, done the trick as well. Um, so it, I guess it really needed to be hitting the Lion's Eye Diamond off the draw. But yeah. he had seen his hand and, and didn't, you know, and, and knew that he didn't have it earlier. And he'd only, like, there's only a couple of hidden cards in yeah. that fresh draw. So the, the one thing to ask yourself is what's the benefit of waiting on click in this matchup? Right. I don't think there is one. So it's not like your opponent like is playing some sort of control mirror. That's true. That is certainly a good point. And Thank I think in you. general, I do favor against combo decks casting at the end of their draw step, whereas against control decks or other decks casting it on the um, the end step. Yeah. As a general rule of thumb, I think. Obviously, there are exceptions and a lot of nuance contextually, but... Yep. So, yeah, I do think that Bob is just thinking through his lines. Uh, yep, and oh. he thought through it, realized that there was nothing he could do given the uh, the <laughs> options that Caleb had, and, and there you have so, it. Uh, yet, yet another 3-0 sweep. Yeah. We've had so, four three O sweeps, which is, I think, very unlikely. I do think that's very unlikely, especially with this caliber of player. Like, uh, you know, every person at the quarterfinals is an amazing player. So, okay, well, that was the second uh, set of this quarterfinal, the second week of the quarterfinals, and now we like to take the time to thank our sponsors. So we have uh, Card Hoarder, been amazing sponsors. Um, they have uh, another uh, 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 raffle giveaway here. So if you type uh, uh, dollar sign Card Hoarder in chat, you'll get entered into uh, this uh, this raffle. But yeah, so let's see. Win 10 tickets of bot credit with Card Hoarder Magic Online. And so is that like a, a Pokemon? No, that's their logo. That's their, uh, uh, that's that's their, their logo. logo, I think. Yeah. No, I love Card Hoarder. They're just so efficient, so easy to work with. Their customer service is great. Um, I have a friend, actually, who had some Magic Online cards stolen through a hack, and, and Card Hoarder had inadvertently purchased them from this, the, uh, the thief. And yeah. it worked out that um, Card, Hoarder, Card Hoarder was able to work with PayPal, to get the money back from the person who they paid selling the stolen cards, 
and then actually get that money back to the cards back to the person they were stolen from. So that's an amazing level of service by Card Hoarder, and and they really go out of their way. They're just great. So definitely support them when you can. They're uh, they've been great to everyone and to us. So yeah, second week of the second quarter finals uh, in the books now for Legacy Premier League for this season. So I guess that means that uh, you're through. Um, yeah. Caleb's through. Michael oh, Bond is through. Yep. And who's the fourth? Who's the fourth? Mac Doyle is through. Mac Doyle. So we have our semifinalists. And you're part of that illustrious crew, so you yep. must be pretty excited to be through into the semifinals. Um, I'm going to be playing against Michael Bond and the other matches, Caleb versus uh, Mac. Okay, cool. Well, that's exciting. Um, I guess that's all set up because of the bracket and the way things work out, right? So you know yep. that in advance. Gotcha. Yep. Do you know the, uh, the format of the semifinals? It's exactly the same, except we pick three different decks now. Gotcha. And so you have to pick three different decks. Uh, I'm not sure if we do. I, I think we just consider it a new match, essentially. A new King of the Hill match. Gotcha. So you can you can resubmit decks that you trade in the quarterfinals. I want to say yes for now, but I will check the rules in a bit. Gotcha. I, I imagine that you can, because if you couldn't, then presumably you would have been told so that you could bring that into your thought consideration of what decks you wanted to bring yep. to the quarterfinals. Okay, so we've drawn the winner, and the winner is... Um, UN Dominion. Oh, oh congrats. Un, undominion. Un, undominion, I guess. Undominion. It's like undomain, but there's an I instead of the in front of the A. So congratulations, Undomian. Um, you've won a nice 10 tickets of Bach Credit with Card Harder on Magic Online. So congratulations. Um, but yeah, so that's all exciting stuff. And this has been quite a legacy Premier League. I have to say... It was a delight, a pure pleasure to watch Bomberman just tear it up in Legacy. Oh, That's yeah. great. That was uh, unexpected, I would say, but I'm glad that uh, Caleb showed the power of that deck. Yeah, no, that that was quite an impressive run. Um, I guess, I, you know, I've seen Bomberman a tiny bit in Vintage. I'm not particularly familiar with Vintage, but I do know it exists there and what it can do. But I had not seen it in Legacy. I heard someone mention that it got played in Japan, but I'd never seen the list or that, uh, that it could do quite that. So that's pretty impressive. So, yep. again, it seems that Monster Mentor is just a key card in that kind of deck where it's got this other game plan going with combos, but it can just mm. play monks and kill you. Yep. Do you think that uh, Monster Mentor, is, are there other like, secret hiding spots or like secret decks waiting to be found that just exploit Monster Mentor? It's hard to tell. Uh, maybe, I don't know. A lot of, it was really good with Sunset's Divine Top, which was obviously right, right. Hard, but But... Um, I don't know. Just spell heavy decks. Okay. All right. You, well, you, you occasionally see it in storm sideboards, but yeah, I uh, think we're trying to wrap it up now. No, there are no more matches coming today, Kuluma Forty Seven. But I think in a few weeks after the Grand Prix, we will start it back up again. Yeah. So unfortunately, we did have that uh, those three O soups twice again, and as you said, it's extremely unlikely that every single one of our quarterfinals would be resolved this King of the Hill with only three matches. Uh, yeah. sweep. So that means that uh, two of our four, or sorry, four of our eight quarterfinalists all played only one deck and just went all the way with that one. That's uh, <laughs> some, some good deck building, some good choices there. So uh, there you go. Um, but yeah, so I guess that will do it for us tonight. Um, we'd like to thank you for joining us for Legacy Premier League. Uh, it's been great, and it's nice to know that we have some amazing semifinalists coming up. And so uh, there will be a break next week. So next week, I don't think that there is a Legacy Premier League on Thursday night because of GP Las Vegas. So the players will be, or some of our players will be over there playing GP Las Vegas and, uh, you know, probably watching the coverage for that. So we will take a break for a week, but we will return the week after that with the semifinals. Um, so that's really exciting. I'm, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen, what decks people are going to bring. So, you know, I'm not going to ask you to spoil your thoughts or kind of what you think you're going to do. But uh, if you had to kind of like think of a meta game for this semifinals, what do you think might be in it? Well, I think most of the people are willing to play Grixis Delver as a potential deck because it's the de facto best deck right now. And okay. in particular, my opponent, Michael Bondé, is well known for playing Death and Taxes. So I would not be surprised to see that. But as for, his, as for a third deck, it's hard to tell. It's just, um, you know, it could be almost anything. I trust him to figure out some good decks versus me and trying them. Okay. Yeah, and I guess I can't really ask you if you have any secret uh, secret tech up your sleeve, but uh, I know that you always put together a very tight list, and I know that you uh, have always have a really great game plan. So it'd be really interesting to see what you bring to the match, bring to the fight. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Well, you said it for GP Las Vegas. I assume you're going. 
I am. I am. Cool. Uh, do you have any thoughts on like what that meta game will look like? Uh, most played decks will be Death and Taxes, Grixis Delver, Elves, Storm, and possibly Sneak and Show. I think. Okay. Do you think that there's going to be a top deck uh, coming in and a top deck can be going out? Top deck going oh. in, probably Grixis Delver. Okay. So here we can actually see a little bit of the bracket, so we can see how we've narrowed down from uh, the wider world of, I think we started with 16, um, yeah. and then we got down to the quarterfinals, which we just finished. And so you can see here that um, uh, Caleb Derward beat Bob Huang just this minute ago, and then before that, Jarvis beat Julian. And then uh, previously in the quarterfinals last week, um, Jarvis can run through who, who won there. Um, Michael Bond beat Brett Jane, and um, Mac Doyle beat Nick Fiola. Excellent. So there you go. So as you can see, uh, those four players, uh, Mac Doyle, Michael Bond, Bob, uh, sorry, Caleb Durward, and Jarvis Yu are dancing to the semifinals. And so Jarvis is going to face off against Michael Bond, and Mac Doyle is going to face off against Caleb Durward. As we said, we'll be taking a break next week for GP Las Vegas on next Thursday, but we will be back the Thursday after that. So... Uh, what a wow! What a, what an evening! Just yeah, what an evening! Legacy. I mean, I don't know. Legacy is always brilliant. I just love seeing what people do in Legacy. It's easily my favorite Magic format. You know, you can do so many different things, and and that's what I think that that's happened. I do think that the, the Legacy is really wide open right now. It is. Um, it it is extremely wide open, and there's a lot of ways to exploit the top decks. So you might see people do that at the Grand Prix, like bring a mentor. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe some people will be inspired from this uh, Legacy know. Premier League. I guess that's actually a good question for you, right? So, like, to what extent do you think that the Legacy Premier League games and matches will actually impact the um, the metagame of the GP? Because I'm sure that people are, like, scouring the internet for inspiration for what the meta might look like and watching games and stuff. And I think the Legacy Premier League has been a great source of videos and content and new thoughts and new decks for, for preparation for the GP. So what, do you think there will be some impact there? Yeah, but... I think just given uh, percentage-wise, the MTGO 5 lists tend to have a bigger impact because there's okay. a lot more of them. Fair enough. That and they're, they're all collated in the same place every day. So. Right, yeah. I, I would not be surprised to see some impact from this, but uh, I would guess that there's more impact from people going to MTGO.com and looking at the 5 lists every day. Sure. There's definitely a weight of data on the MTGO five, you know, top top eight list, or sorry, top five uh, lists um, from MTGO. So if you're looking for like the raw data, which is always the best thing to make your decisions on, that's definitely the place to go, and that's what people will be looking at. But there's something to be said for like you know people spending 45 minutes watching a deck just get beat up on or do something really <laughs> sick, and you know even though it might not be completely logical or rational, you can be like, wow, that looks really amazing. And, you know, I want to check that out. Yeah, I, I do think you'll see some people try Bomberman uh, Mentor. Yep. I mean, if, if not at the GP, at least uh, on Magic yeah. Online over the next yeah, exactly. couple of days. Yeah. So, well, it looked really sweet, so I want to see more of that deck. And, you know, it'd be really cool if to have another combo deck in the format. Do you see it as being an inherently weak deck? Or is the combo easily disruptable? Well, I will say if someone plays Stony Silence or Null Rod versus Caleb, uh, he okay. will not have fun playing that deck. <laughs> I'm sure that's true. But, uh, you know, how, like Legacy is so diverse. How, how often can you really put in Null Rod or Stony Silence for a very <laughs> fringe combo buffers? deck? How about Fraction Revokers? Okay. All right. Well, whew, that was great. So um, there you go. So let's see. So um, let's see. What else have we got going on here? I think uh, Mike wants to wrap it up now. Yep, that but, makes sense. Uh, thanks for everyone watching. And tune in for the semifinals in a few weeks. Okay, yeah. Again, thanks everyone for joining us. It's been Legacy Premier League. We've had a great time here with the quarterfinals, and we will catch you next time.